Welcome to the introduction to electrical engineering. And in this lecture, you'll learn about electrical components. The agenda for today is going to go over the most basic passive electrical components in a simple circuit. Resistors, capacitors, inductors, conductors, insulators, and power source. You'll also learn about the usage of an ammeter and a voltmeter. In this lecture, resistors are the most common electrical component. You'll see resistors in almost every circuit. A key feature of a resistor is that it dissipates power and produces heat. We usually use the letter R to represent resistance and its resistance is measured in ohms. It is also important to know that wires are not perfect conductors and therefore they have a finite resistance which sometimes plays an important role in the circuit analysis. Each resistor has a color coding band that represents the component's capacity. The first band is the first digit. The second band is the second digit. The third band is the multiplier and the fourth band is the tolerance. So let's look at the example on the bottom. So if we're looking at this resistor, the green band represents five for the first digit. The blue band represents the number six as the second digit, so that's 56. The third band is the multiplier, so we can see that it's brown, so we're gonna multiply 56 times 10, so that comes out to 560 ohms. And then the fourth band is the resistance tolerance. So that's the plus or minus. And in this example, it's silver, so it's plus or minus 10%. So our resistance tolerance is gonna to be somewhere between 504 ohms and 616 ohms. So let's look at this example of a resistor. So the first digit, if we see using this chart, is red. So our first digit is going to be a two. Our second digit is black, and so using the chart, we can see that that is a zero. Our power, so our power in this example is gonna be red, and that's gonna be 100, so 20 times 100 equals 2,000 ohms. And the fourth band is the resistance or tolerance. So in this example, it is gold, so it's gonna be plus or minus 5%. And so that is going to be between somewhere between 1900 to 2100 ohms for this example. Capacitors can store and release energy, but unlike a resistor, it does not require or dissipate power. Rather, it quickly stores and discharges electricity and smooths out voltage variations. The basic structure of a capacitor consists of two metal plates separated by a dielectric but the dielectric is simply an issue light that can store energy by becoming polarized. Based on what we use the dielectric material, there are different types of capacitors, such as ceramic, polyester, electrolytic capacitors. Capacitors are measured in ferrets and are usually represented using the letter C, as you can see from this example. An inductor, is simply a wire winding into a coil. We often use the letter L as a symbol to represent an inductor in an electric diagram. Since wires have finite resistance, the inductor has also has some resistance and dissipates power similar to a capacitor. The energy stored by the inductor is in the form of magnetic field and it's measured in Henry's. Conductors provide a path for current to flow to the parts that will control and use it. Materials with very low resistance are conductors. Copper is the most common conductor. Aluminum is not quite as good as copper, but is lighter and less expensive. Aluminum is often used in thick service entrance cables that bring electricity into homes. Silver and gold are better conductors than copper and aluminum, but are only used in very specific applications due to their cost. Conductors come in a wide variety of configurations. They can be solid wire, stranded wire, ribbon, or bar shapes, dependent on their, their use. For example, solid copper wire is commonly used in residential wiring because it does not need to move once it ins is installed. Conductors are size-based on their cross-sectional area. The size of the round conductor is determined by using the American wire gauge system. In the AWG system, smaller numbers represent larger wires, 
For instance, 12 gauge wire is larger than 30 gauge wire, and 14 gauge wire is commonly used in houses for general lighting and receptacle circuits. The electrical insulator is a device that provides the required insulation between the line conductor and earth. Due to this insulation, leakage current can flow from the line conductor to the earth. Insulators are shown by the letter I. This is the symbol that you will see most electrical diagrams. Lastly, to complete the circuit, you always have some energy source. The energy source, which can vary from battery, a generator, or a solar panel, since the power consumption is different in different circuits. It's crucial to choose the right power supply for the circuit to operate properly. The important attribute of a circuit is its voltage and current. You will learn the physical meaning of these two qualities in the next lecture, but right now I just want you to know that to measure voltage, you need to connect a voltmeter in parallel to the components that you wish to measure. In this example, you will see that we are measuring voltage across a resistor. As for the current, you'll need to connect an ammeter in series with the component you wish to measure, the current from. In conclusion, control devices direct and or limit current flows, so a circuit meets its desired function. For example, insulators keep current in the conductor and protect against shorts, and resistors limit current flow to protect sensitive components. All of these components listed here are considered control components. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and have a great day.